This is highlight 24 in the book of Hebrews, drawn from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 to 14, about the fact that we are holy. It says, We've been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made Holy. The dominant word here is holy, appearing twice. That is difficult because holy is one of those words which tends to mean something rather different in our everyday usage from what it means in Scripture. Holiness, in common usage, tends to mean something like being so heavenly minded has to be no earthly use. That is far away from scripture usage. Holy is the prime attribute of God. He is pure. He is perfect love. He is true justice. He is different from everything else. He is holy other and above and beyond all else. When the word holy is applied to some body, or something on the earth. It means they, or it, are so close to God that some of that holiness has rubbed off onto them. We need to put together what our writer says here with what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. To take what Paul says first, he is interested in the practical effects of being holy. He says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is no beginning suggestion there or anywhere else in Scripture, that holiness requires withdrawal from everyday life. It might be easier if it did, but it doesn't. We have to live in the world, but not in the way of the world. We have to have a different mindset, a different worldview, a different focus of all our endeavors, a different Lord. We have to please God have to let as much of the holiness of God rub off on us as we can. That can only happen if we live in close proximity to him as much as possible. Or, to put it another way, we are to walk hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. That is Paul's emphasis. But what about our writer here? He is more concerned with how this can possibly have happened. It is all because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. This is the positive aspect of what Jesus achieved. We probably rightly think more of the negative, of what he did as securing forgiveness of sin for us, sin past, sin present, and sin future. Positively, he set us on a way, a pathway, which we are to walk with the Spirit. He has perfected us, perfected us in the sense that we cannot, could not, be any more acceptable to the Lord of all than we are through Jesus. We have reached an end, a completion of our lives and character. Wow!